Hello guys, Saga here and welcome back to another video. This is episode 1 of how to make a scrolling shooter in Unity. Now before we start, this series will have multiple parts as I don't want to make this video too long and I want to keep it simple. Now one more disclaimer, this general game idea and the general code for this game has been used many times by lots of people. Because this game is so simple, this has been reused many times, so by no means am I saying this is my original code, I obviously adjusted things and changed them, but this code stems from a really long time ago when people were making scrolling shooters, so different parts of this code belong to different people. I'm just here to provide an easy explanation and tutorial on how to change this into an actual game. Final thing, this project is really easy to add to in the future, so it's totally expandable. Anyways, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so to start, you're going to go ahead and open up Unity, press New, and then you're going to go ahead and select your template. I am going to be using 2D, however, you can use 3D, but some features will need to be changed to suit that. Go ahead and give it a project name. Go ahead and press Create and wait for your game to load. Okay, so once Unity is opened up, I've gone ahead and created some folders. So I've got a prefabs folder, a scenes folder, and sprites folder. I just created it by right-clicking and pressing create and folder. This is just to organize some things. Now in my sprites folder, you can go ahead and drag in your player model. Now this can be a spaceship, this can be anything you want. For the purpose of this video though, I am just going to be using a rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and right-click, press create, and I'm gonna go ahead and select sprites and I'm going to select square. I'm going to name this player sprite. Now what you want to go ahead and do next is go ahead and drag it into your game. Inside here you can go ahead and adjust the size however you want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back. Okay so I've gone ahead and adjusted the size. I'm also going to set the position to zero. You can do this wherever you want but I think zero is a good starting point. Next I'm going to go ahead and select my canvas size. This is really important because it depends how big you want your game. Now currently my game is 16 by 10 and that is okay. I can leave it as that. However if you do want to change your game size go ahead and do that in game underneath here and you can go ahead and select any of these sizes or you can go ahead and create your own. After doing this I'm going to come here and I'm going to rename this to just player. Now inside the player I'm going to go ahead and press add component and type in player controller. I'm going to go ahead and press new script and create an ad. Once that is loaded up go ahead and double click on the script. So once we are in here we can go ahead and delete all of this as we're not going to be needing it for now and we're going to go ahead and create a public float variable. This is going to be called a speed. This is just basically the speed that the player is going to move at. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a void update function. So inside of here, I'm going to go ahead and make a variable called float x. This is going to equal input dot get access raw brackets speech marks horizontal. And below, I'm going to go ahead and create a float y, which is also going to equal input dot get access raw. This time is going to equal vertical. So after doing these two variables, we're going to go ahead and create a vector2 to compute a direction. This is very simple. Go ahead and type vector2. Now we are doing 2D, that's why vector2 will work. If you're doing 3D, you're going to need to change this to vector3. We're going to go ahead and call this direction and it's going to go ahead and equal new vector2. In brackets, we're going to type x, y. And we're going to make sure that this is normalized. So we're going to type a dot normalize at the end and make sure to add your semicolon at the end. Now I'm going to go ahead and call the function that's going to compute and set the player's position. So let's go ahead and call this move. Okay, so now we have to actually create the function. So let's go ahead and type in void move bracket vector to direction. And let's make sure we do the curly brackets. So now we shouldn't get any errors. In here, we're actually going to go ahead and initialize the movement so the player actually moves. So this is very simple. We're going to first of all go ahead and find the screen limits to the player's movement because we don't want the player to go ahead and move out of the screen. So this is very simple. We're going to go ahead and type a vector to min. Now this is going to equal our camera main. So make sure you type in camera dot main. Then we're going to go ahead and do viewport to world point. In brackets, we're going to go ahead and type a new vector to bracket zero comma zero. And there we go. That's going to find a minimum value. Now we can go ahead and just copy this as we're going to need to create a max. This time we're going to change this min to max. We're also going to change the zero, sorry, to one. And there we go. We have now calculated the minimal and maximum size of the screen. Now we're going to go ahead and have to subtract the player's sprite half width and add the player's sprite half width. This is really important because we're going to also have to do this for our height. So for this, you're going to go ahead and minimize, grab your player, and you need to go ahead and find the width and the height of your player. 
So this is really simple to find. Where it says scale, this will be our width and this will be our height. So go ahead and divide this value by two and divide this value by two. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and round this to 0.5 and this to one as it's just going to be easier for me to go ahead and divide this. So obviously 0.5 is going to be 0.25 and the 1 is going to be 0.5. Let's go ahead and type in max.x and that's going to equal our max.x minus, and now remember this is going to be subtract the sprite half width. So your width divided by 2 minus 0.25 and the max values. And make sure you type an F so that value there. Now we're going to go ahead and do this for the min minimal value. So let's go ahead and type in min dot x was min dot x. This time we're going to add it. So let's go ahead and make sure we add 0.25 F. Now we're going to go ahead and figure out the max y and the minimal y. So the same thing, we can go ahead and copy this. And all you need to change is the x's to the y's. And finally, this value change it to whatever the half of your height is. So my height was one, so we divide it by two and it's gonna be 0.5. So that's what I'm gonna change it to. Pretty simple. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get the player's current position. So this is done in a very simple way. Once again, we're gonna go ahead and make a vector two called pos, and this is gonna be a transform.position. Now we need to go ahead and calculate the new position. So this is gonna be pos plus equal direction times speed times time dot delta time. Now data delta time is going to be the relative time we're talking about right now. Okay, so now that we have done that, we need to actually check whether the player's position is outside the screen. Because we have this here, but we haven't actually checked for it yet. So this is very simple. Type in pos dot x, and this is going to equal math f dot clamp. We need to make sure to clamp it so it, it doesn't cause any issues. Pos dot x bracket min dot x bracket max dot x. And there we go, we have mouse calculated our pos.x. We're gonna go ahead and copy this. And very simply, we're just gonna change the x's to y's now. So we do this on the y scale as well. Final thing, we're gonna need to update the player's position. So type in transform.position or equals pos. Now that that is done, we can go ahead and save this and we can go ahead and close it up now. So now that we have done that, let's go ahead and open up this player controller and set the speed to whatever you want. I'm going to set it to five. This might be too fast, but we can go ahead and test it out. So press play and you should be able to move your character around. Pretty simple. Now this works with WASD and also with the arrow keys, so it's very versatile. However, you can change that in the Unity import. So now we have basic player movement. So that's it for this tutorial. Stick around for the next episode where we're going to be going over particles. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, comment down below if you enjoyed it and if you want more parts. And thank you so much for watching guys. Bye!